I'm live. Is that it? Uh -huh. I thought there was going to be a countdown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no countdown. So I, you know, I've um, I've missed out on my thirty seconds to prepare. That oh, that's a shame. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, the the Dundee University Comedy Club Open Mic. This is the first episode, and uh, I am the only person in the show affiliated with. Dundee University. We, we might change that title, we might not. It's a, it's a work in progress. <laughs> but tonight, I'm going to talk to you for a wee bit, and we've got a host of fine comedians to tell you their, their funny insights on uh, this crazy world called lockdown. So, what's been going on right now? A lot of people have been trying to learn new skills, and I have been learning to cook. I've been doing an online cookery class, and we can just ask the chef, we can say, well, what we want to make and he tells us. So I said to the chef, I said, how do I make a chickpea soup? And he said, you can't. You just have to hope she gets diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that mean. So, um, you know, I'm still hungry. Uh, that's no, no, nothing's changed there. Um, been doing a bit of music. That's a bit different. I can't meet up with my band members, but we, we sort of meet up online and try and play together. Uh, I'm in a band called The Duvets. The Duvets, but we mostly do covers. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> another band I was in called uh, Megabyte. We were in a band called Megabyte, but we never got a gig. <laughs> um, don't worry. That's the rubbish one's done. We're moving up from there. So I, I'm feeling pretty healthy at the moment. I was in the hospital recently. I had a, um, a neck operation. And since then, I've never looked back. <laughs> so I was um, I was uh, getting an ice cream the other day got a bit of a sweet tooth went to the ice cream van and I said hey excuse me can I have an ice cream and he said sure hundreds and thousands and I said no no just the one <laughs> <laughs> it's important <clears throat> while you learn a hobby to also keep your mind active one thing I love to do is crossword puzzles uh, so I was doing a crossword puzzle with my brother, and it was one I was really struggling with here. Um, and I says to him, listen, you know, I've got some letters in. I've got some letters filled in. This is it. Four letters. It's a female relative. Ends U-N-T. And my brother said, and. <laughs> my brother said, and. I said, pass it to Pepe. <laughs> so Ooh, we're not I don't really go to pubs anymore don't feel safe and you know they've sort of been closing the pubs in Scotland now but uh, one time I was in the pub before lockdown doing a crossword with my friend said got this one for you uh, eight letters starts with M and it means isolated on a desert island he said marooned I said cheers pal I'll have a pint of tenants <laughs> Talking about pubs, I've not got a job at the moment, but I, I tried to get a, a job in the pub. The interview was going quite well. And he said, Connor, we are, we're going to let you on. We're going to let you on board. Now, I'll tell you the pay is £7.50 an hour. Then after six months, it's £12.50 an hour. Now, when can you start? I said, can I start in six months? <laughs> uh, so you got to watch out. So, you know, people are struggling for money and scammers are getting you. Scammers are getting you. The other day I got a text. I could tell it was a scam. Um, and it, it gave me a text. It said I'd won two prizes and I had to pick between them. So I could win £250, easy money, or I could get two tickets to an Elvis tribute concert. It said press one for the money, two for the show. <laughs> 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 that was a tough one that was a tough one to resist because I love Elvis in fact I had a pet mouse called Elvis but he died when uh, he got caught in a trap uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's right. I know it's getting a wee bit cold it's getting a wee bit cold winter is coming as they say and I noticed on my car the other day um, the, the windscreen was completely covered in frost and I, had, I didn't have any anything to get off so I, I used my Tesco club card Try and scrape off the ice, but I only got ten percent off. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that's quite scary is panic buying. People did it, you know. People are doing it now. People are doing it now. I go to the supermarket, I see 
trolleys filled with toilet rolls and stuff. And I think it's so stupid that these people are panic buying. I'm not panic buying. I still have enough supplies from my panic buying in March. <laughs> away, right? No panic buying. That I, I'm happy to say I did recently get a job. I got a job where there are 500 people beneath me. Yeah, I cut the grass at the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Talking on that, that morbid theme of death, this is something I, I, uh, I shy away from generally. Um, hitchhikers. You don't get them anymore, but they're quite scary. One time, a hitchhiker was getting his thumb out, and, you know, I just I let him in the car, and he said, all right, well, th that was brave of you, letting me into the car. Yeah. How do you know I'm not a serial killer? I said, don't be that. The odds <laughs> of there being two serial killers in the same car is that <laughs> <laughs> So I find it's tough, these rules. I'm stuck in my flat right now. Had to quarantine for two weeks after being to Iceland. And I only went for some frozen chips. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a wee bit different. I think Christmas mm. is cancelled. Christmas is cancelled. Halloween's cancelled. You're not going to get no kids knocking at your door saying trick or treat. They'll be saying track or trace. I'll be the new phrase. <laughs> <that> new <laughs> Been having a bug problem in my flat. Wasps, they're still about for some reason. So I went to like a uh, DIY shop, found this like this spray. It was like flies dead. It says, oh, it kills flies. And I said to the guy working there, I said, hey, um, see this spray. Is it good for wasps? And he said, no, it kills them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The other day, I, um, I, I, um, I got a bad arm. I, um, I broke my arm a few months ago. But then, you know, I was at the doctor's and I was healing it up. And I said, tell me, doctor. Um, when this is healed, will I be able to play the guitar? And she said, yeah, of course. I said, great, because I couldn't play guitar before the accident. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm going to stop boring you. And it's time to bring on our first act. And I'm very excited to see this guy perform. He's a very funny fella. Um, I know you're going to love him. Great guy. Great laugh. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for uh, Jimmy Longmere. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, thanks very much. Thanks, Woods famous. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Cheers, thanks very much, Connor. Um, so I'm a wee bit distracted because I had to write some of my jokes in my hand earlier on, but um, also getting used to this fucking format. I mean, obviously I'm here to tell some jokes, right? But given the format, I feel like I should be issuing some kind of plea and assurance to the camera, like, I'm okay, no one's hurt me, they're feeding me. But can you please, please make sure the funds are transferred by close of business on Friday? <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. I'm getting used to these gigs now. I've done gigs all over the world from the comfort of my own home. I've done a gig in New York from my bathroom. I've done a gig in Los Angeles from my living room. The other night I've done a gig in Paris from my kitchen and I was sitting on a plate. Totally fucking smashed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But well, one thing they say when you're doing comedy is be yourself. Well, here I am in my house alone doing comedy at my phone because I'm desperate for validation. <laughs> and is be yourself always the best advice anyway? I mean, I'm a paranoid, anxious and depressed, recently bereaved, unemployed, recovering addict, suffering from symptoms of complex PTSD. <laughs> and now I'm under lockdown. I don't think he's already for me to be myself. <laughs> and be yourself isn't always the best advice anyway. I mean, would you say that to somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer? Be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can imagine Jeffrey Dahmer going into work one day, ready to confess everything, and he goes up to a co-worker like, oh man, I've got to tell you something, I need to get this off my chest. I keep going to bars and getting drunk and hitting younger guys, and then I bring out my sleeping tablets, and some fucking dip it idiot in the chocolate factory. He's like, Jeff, Jeff, it's all good. Just be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeffrey Dahmer's walked away thinking it's okay to keep heads in the fridge and try and turn people into sex zombies. <laughs> <laughs> all right man <laughs> but this lockdown this lockdown's totally fucking my head it was all right at first man lockdown was okay at first i managed to keep myself active and going for long walks around my neighborhood in fact one day i walked pretty far and found myself in a place that was technically very crowded although everyone stayed at least six feet away so that was good but all the same i never went back to that graveyard <laughs> <laughs> I managed to keep myself safe, well, and busy. But start mainly I kept myself busy by assuring every cunt I know in different apps that I was safe and well. 
<laughs> but three months in, whenever anyone texted to ask how I was doing, I felt a texting back. I'm doing the same as you. I'm pretending everything's fine now. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about the lockdown, though, I actually served a six-week pr- uh, prison sentence 20 years ago. People have always asked me what prison was like. And I've never been able to describe it until now. Now I can say prison was almost exactly like this lockdown, except I didn't have to put up with your partner and kids and I knew when it was going to be over. (laughs) And I get sick of wanking in lockdown. (laughs) I didn't even know you could get sick of wanking. I I blame 5G. I thought 5G was going to be good news for (laughs) shit porn addicts. I mean, even monkeys in captivity enjoy a little wank from time to time. I know that for a fact, because that was an awkward family outing. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a zookeeper, what could you do about a monkey that keeps wanking anyway? I'm sure it's much harder to explain to an eight-year-old why your monkey doesn't have any hands. <laughs> <laughs> we also got a pretty good situation in the middle of lockdown with Captain Tom Moore. Captain Tom Moore's a hundred-year-old man. He'd done a hundred laps of his garden and earned in excess of 40 million for charity. I really thought that was amazing until, you know, I thought about it a bit. We've seen old guys that like to keep fit, charm the public, raise money for charity (laughs) and have a presence around the NHS and the pop charts before. (laughs) And we were all made to look very foolish with Jimmy Savile. (laughs) Now, like I said, I'm pretty paranoid, but I think for now we should definitely keep the lads and lassies well away from Tom Moore. Certainly by at least two metres. Yeah. (laughs) See, I've done a lot of jokes about the lockdown, but I'm not going to do any jokes about the coronavirus itself because I'm old enough to remember jokes about the planes in 9-11 <laughs> and none of them landed. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we had, we had, Tinder had to stop at the start of lockdown, which was actually pretty good for me because by the time lockdown happened, every time I spoke to a girl on Tinder, she was saying, you're just looking for material, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, have you got any? Going to noise. <laughs> going out on all these crazy dates. But I think a lot of the reason that I was going so daft on Tinder is because I was in a pretty bad relationship before that. In fact, my last relationship was so toxic, you could have used its energy to get a DeLorean back to 1985. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, was, it was okay at first. I actually turned out she was into BDSM, which was something I wasn't too familiar with. found out she was into BDSM in her second date when she appeared on my doorstep wearing a French maid's outfit. And she asked me to tie her a black swivel chair in the middle of my living room. So I complied with her wishes and tied her a black swivel chair in the middle of my living room. And when I done that, she said, you can do anything you want to me. And I was like, I'm kind of getting that from the fact that you're tied to a black swivel chair in the middle of my living room. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were rehearsing for a kinky mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be honest, at that point, if she just asked me to stop, I might have just said, I've started, so finish. <laughs> <laughs> She was in other stuff as well. She was in like arts and crafts and dance and all these types of fiction and dress up that like I'd never heard of, like steampunk. Now, I don't know if you know, but steampunk is Victorian era cyber fiction, which was actually appropriate because she turned out to be quite a fucking gaslighter. <laughs> <laughs> but like I say, it was a toxic relationship and I played my part in how messed up it got as well. Like the last night we were in bed together, she told me I was selfish. She said I was ignorant. And you know, she said something else, but I can't remember because I was having a wank at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we split up and then I went daft and Tinder and I had to stop doing Tinder because fucking lockdown but then and the, the very last day that the pubs, pubs are open I get one Tinder date first Tinder date in months it was going really really well I was sitting in the pub at fucking five o'clock because I had to go before six and we're talking away and she seemed to like me and I really liked her and at one point I leaned out to take her hands and she looked at my hand and stood up and stormed off. And I was like, wait, 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 where are you going? And she said, why the fuck do you have BDSM and dog and toxic relationship gaslight and wanking written in your hand? <laughs> 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 um, I so it was back to lockdown. <laughs> but, um, uh, cheers, that's me, guys. Um, if you enjoyed my set, my stuff's on the screen. Can viewers what, see this corner, the Jimmy Jock thing? Yes, I, I believe so. <laughs> and also as well, I'm st- I'm hosting a podcast called Oh Lockdown, How We Laughed, about how people, m- fucking mad men like myself, are managing to keep comedy going in lockdown. If you want to check that out, there's a Facebook page for it, Oh Lockdown, How We Laughed. And um, cheers, thanks very much, Connor. Yeah! <laughs>
All right, everyone, Thank give it up for Jimmy Longmuir. That was outstanding. Yeah. I really like that, Jimmy. And it's interesting what you said about being yourself. You know, I, I met someone <laughs> the other day who was unafraid to be himself. It was my barber. I went to him and I said, listen, what cut would make me most attractive? He said a power cut. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the only one, right? I had to be in my cell. Yeah. Some look fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. And um, I went to see the butcher the other day. Yeah, I asked him for some fight. Well, he gave me a Love Island box set. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like, enough of my nonsense, right? I'm going to swiftly bring on the second act. Now, fun fact for you. This guy gave me my second ever gig, my first ever online gig. He, he gave me the contagious comedy bug, and uh, I, I can't thank him enough. So in return, I'm giving him a little spot on the show uh, in front of four people, and uh, <laughs> I hope he enjoys um, So I'm just going to... Uh, so I'm going to get get him on. <laughs> uh, how do I do that? Da, 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 da. Oh, yes. And uh, everyone, please... Give it up for the uh, amazing, my, my good friend, it is uh, Stephen Youngson! Yeah. I went backstage, it was just like yeah. in school and getting ignored by everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hi ladies and gentlemen, yeah, thanks for having me on, Connor. Uh, my name's Stephen and I come from a wee small town called Wishaw. Hey, so, uh, when I try to explain Wishaw to people who have never been before, what I generally say is, well, you know how Scotland's well known for its beautiful scenery of like castles and mountain ranges and freshwater lochs? Well, Wishers get absolutely fucking none of that. <laughs> Wisher, Wisher has got more in common with somewhere like the Gaza Strip than the rest of Scotland. <laughs> That's both culturally and aesthetically, I'll add, because aesthetically, Wishaw looks like it's been hit by constant water fire. <laughs> and, and, uh, and culturally, we too have been locked in a sectarian civil war, which has lasted generations. <laughs> but during the initial lockdown of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, Wishaw looked exactly the same. As it always does. There was <laughs> local businesses that will likely never reopen. There was deserted main streets and a line of people standing outside the health of a consistent dry cough. Going out to going out to the health centre in Wishaw sometimes going through that door is like going on an episode of Stars in the Rhymes. You walk through that smoke-filled door like, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be asymptomatic. <laughs> <laughs> beard, I get asked quite a lot of questions about the beard that I sport. The first one usually, hear me, where the fuck is the rest of your beard? <laughs> 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 trying to cosplay as Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and this one, are you Amish? Amish. <laughs> I know people in have been a bit behind the time, but the only the only electrical appliances we truly fear are CCTV cameras. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not even it's not even a fashion statement, ladies and gentlemen. No, I, the, the fact is I've got a pretty poor relationship with food. And this year a family veiled attempt to make it look like there's a line where my chin ends and my neck begins. <laughs> yeah. Piling the pounds on over lockdown, but it's not even the snacks or anything. It's not even lockdown's fault, all right? It's the finish the plate mentality that I've had drummed into my head as a wee guy growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Getting brought up around my grand's bit, right? My gran was a staunch Catholic, and I am a staunch heathen. But my, <laughs> my heathen defences were nothing against the kind of Catholic guilt this woman could inflict with words alone. <laughs> You'd be trying to push your plate away like, I'm done with that gran. She'd take one look at it and go, that's terrible, Stephen. As a poor wee starving kid in the world, they could have had that for the dinner. <laughs> All right, Granny, and you just finish it, and I feel bad now. All right, I feel like all my problems have came from this point. I just wish that as a wee guy, I had the cheek or the audacity in me to call her out one time. Maybe I could have avoided this big fat neck I've been growing. 
if I just uh, went, right, Granny, no bother, hen. Let's fucking do this. Let's send this food to the starving children. Right, dear poor wee starving child, please find attached the crusts off my piece at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Burnt fuck chips <laughs> and the arse of a chicken dipper. <laughs> I'm able to sustain you in your recent drought slash famine slash genocide that you are currently facing. <laughs> but I don't know if you can see it by looking at me. Growing up, I was a bit of a punk rocker, right? I'm still a punk, right? A punk at heart. Uh, I used to be the vocalist in punk rock bands growing up. Uh, I say vocal and singing. I was really just shouting left wing political dogma around <laughs> <laughs> the country. <laughs> Whereas now I am telling jokes to possibly three or four people sitting at home <laughs> on the internet how times have changed. Yeah. <laughs> As I've grown and got older, my music taste has grown and changed with me, and I now like two genres of music that you will probably think are very different, but I'm going to explain how I feel they're exactly the same. These two genres of music, on one hand we have Scottish folk music, and on the other hand we have death metal. <laughs> <laughs> There's fucking no way that Scottish folk music and death metal have anything in common. Well, I'll get the one glaring thing out of the way that differentiates them, and that's when you go to see the bands live. Oh, remember that? Remember going to see bands live? That was <laughs> <laughs> well, when I went to see the, the, the Scottish folk band, they introduced a song by saying, this song's about a time we as a band took a beautiful walk up Glencoe. <laughs> death metal band. And the death metal band introduced a song by saying, "The song's about shooting blood at the end of your cock." <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a direct quote, ladies and gentlemen. That song was called "I Come Blood." <laughs> <laughs> I too, like you, I'm shocked that it never made the number one spot on the weekend charts. <laughs> apart from that, the two genres are completely interchangeable. For example, the names of the bands. If I told you that I liked a band called Talisk, you'd maybe think, oh, they sound a bit like some church burning Norwegian black metal outfit, Stephen. Well, <laughs> you'd be wrong. They are a Scottish folk band who sound like an exotic disease. <laughs> <laughs> you could imagine the phone call, couldn't you? Like, hi, hen, hi, that's the doctor's results back, hen, hi. No, no, it's no good news. No, take a seat. It's, it's Talisk. Hi, fuck knows where I've got it. <laughs> for a three-piece Scottish folk band and one guy plays an instrument called a concertina <clears throat> so that's like a wee hexagonal squeeze box you push it in and pull it out play it with your fingers like that and it sounds like an accordion but the speed the speed this guy's fingers can go ladies and gentlemen I don't know what the groupy scene is like in Scottish folk music I could imagine with his dexterous digits, he could finger probably eight women to climax simultaneously. He just <laughs> snaps on their collective clitori. <laughs> <laughs> but another band I like, a metal band called Godira. Again, they sound like a fucking exotic disease, don't they? You could imagine the phone call. Hi, hen, hi, hi, doctor's results are in, hi. No, no, it's no good news, no. No, it's Gajira. Aye, Gajira. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to chop off my big toe at this rate. <laughs> and, uh, Gajira, they are known as France's heaviest metal band. Not really a country synonymous with aggression, I hear you say. But the music, their songs and that, they're not about the sorts of things that you would expect metal bands to sing about. They sing about saving the whale and the environment. Which is like beautifully socially conscious. You are conscious, but it's not very metal, is it? You would expect a French metal band to be singing songs about wars that France have been involved in. You know, fucking blowing the ship out of ships in the high seas. But yeah. Perhaps that's been ruined for them by the pop band ABBA. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
when you go to see these bands live as well, they interact with their audiences quite similarly. For example, a death metal vocalist will be on stage, he'll split the crowd in half and have them run at each other in something known as a wall of death. Other times, the crowd will just get whipped into a frenzy and start running in circles, bashing into each other in something known as a circle pit. But I'll ask you, have any of you been to a Kaylee and done a strip of the wall? <laughs> <laughs> I have been in far sedator mosh pits, I'll tell you that. <laughs> strip the willow with my grand, like, for fuck's sake, grand, come down. You're going to put out my hip, never mind your own. <laughs> you finish your dinner more often, you're going to be such a fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> This makes me believe I would love to see a genre of music appear called Death Cayley. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic Gaelic names for the bands like Kayoch, which for non-Gaelic speakers in the audience means Old Lady. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine walking into a Kayoch gig at the Barrowlands. Hundreds of guys there with denim jackets with no sleeves on them. A big Kayoch patch on the back of their jacket. Uh, showing the artwork for their seminal 1983 album Ich der Bier, which uh, again for non gaelic speakers means eat your food. Eat your food. <laughs> <laughs> the artwork would just be a picture of my gran with a fucking meat cleaver on it. <laughs> but you could imagine the lead singer coming on stage and being like, all right, motherfuckers, are you with me? I want to see this crowd split in half. Girls to this side, guys to the other. It's girl's choice. Grab your partners for the game. <laughs> it's next song's called Donald, Where's Your Trues Are? <laughs> 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 man, uh, if you want to come along to my gig, I run a gig on a Tuesday night called Gig in Your House. It's on Twitch. Then you can find it by Googling that alone. So thanks again for having me on, my man, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Yeah! Yay. Oh, that was fantastic. Everyone, one more time for Stephen Youngson. Outstanding. Now, I really like that. I'm, I, I understand what you're talking about. You're, I've been eating a lot more food during lockdown. And another thing, I've been drinking a bit more as well. But I noticed something uh, in the news. They were saying that hypnotists can cure alcoholism by putting a, a, a message into the alcoholic's head. It's a sobering thought. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much nonsense. I was talking about tripe earlier, but there's so much nonsense in the news. You know, the only thing I take seriously in newspapers is fish and chips. And even that I take with a pinch of salt. <laughs> <laughs> so folks, I am gonna now bring on the third act for you tonight. I think that this is going quite well so far. So, uh, this is another guy I uh, know personally. He's a very funny fella, and you are going to love him. I just know that for a fact. So, everyone, please put your hands together from a good man, Chris Ashworth! Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Connor. It's good to be here on the first ever open mic for uh, Dundee University's Comedy Club. <laughs> Thank you. you don't know me, I am Chris Ashworth. Uh, I'm originally from a little village in Northern Ireland called Macromorn. Um, you might be familiar with Macromorn if you were a fan of Game of Thrones. They used to film all the wall stuff out there, but they missed the trick hiring all those Hollywood actors. If they wanted to make a TV show about incest and bigotry, they probably could have just released a spy drone into the village. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm no longer located in Dundee. I recently moved to Edinburgh. I have to admit, it's been a bit of a culture shock. Very different cities. In Edinburgh, I overheard a couple arguing about how rewarding their children with restaurant meals might form unhealthy attitudes towards food. In Dundee, I saw a father give his son a fiver for spitting at police. <laughs> 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 but moving to Edinburgh has uh, has allowed me to be closer to my dad. Uh, he lives not far from here, and uh, he's a traditional Scotsman. He um, celebrates Burns Night. He wears a kilt. He left my mum. He drinks till he blacks out every night. <laughs> but he has been struggling recently because his dad, uh, my granddad, passed away. You know when you wake up 
in the middle of the night busting for a piss and the first step you take out of bed is right onto an upturned plug and all three pins dig deep into your soul. Well, that's how he died. Except he stood on a landmine. <laughs> but uh, I've been living with my girlfriend now for a little over two years. We uh, pretty much spend all our time together. It's pretty great. But it's funny how we always say the same things to one another. You know, do you fancy a coffee? Should I put the heating on? Please don't listen to me poo. <laughs> But I used to live with my pal. We shared a flat in Belfast, but we would always argue. So we tried that thing from Friends, where they get duct tape and tape off half of the living room. Then they toss a coin to see who gets what half. He's far luckier than me, though. He got the bottom half. <laughs> ah. The number one thing that couples argue about is money. Not me and my girlfriend, though. We mainly argue about the kid how we're going to get it back to its parents. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, historically, boxing was played with bare hands <clears throat> until Peter got involved. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Resounding silence. Love it. I've I had that, that for a while. <laughs> uh, French fries were invented in Belgium. And the term French kiss was coined in England. In fact, the only thing we associate with France that was actually invented there is disappointment. <laughs> Speaking of disappointment, there's no butter in buttermilk. There's no jelly in jellyfish. Don't even get me started on kumquat. <laughs> 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 Did you know that if you add up all the numbers from 1 to 100 consecutively, you have autism? <laughs> <laughs> it takes three alligators to make one pair of boots, but it only takes one alligator to ruin your birthday party. <laughs> Whenever I'm really struggling at the gym, the rude sandstorm helps me push through the wall. I fucking love glory holes. <laughs> Experts say that an average session of sex burns 100 calories. I don't know. That seems a little bit low to me. They obviously haven't counted the calories burned changing into my Spider-Man costume. <laughs> Did you know that an African elephant only has four teeth? When I'm finished with it, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Newman is 13 days older than Gary Oldman. <laughs> I will leave you on one last one. I hit a new low recently. I got rejected for a job. It was at a funeral director's and it sent me on a downward spiral. Frankly, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. I was going to kill myself, but I didn't want to give him the business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Yeah. All right. So, give it up for Chris Ashworth, everybody. Yeah, outstanding. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like that. I know you're talking about no no butter and buttermilk. Well, that, that brought back some bad memories for me, would you believe? Because I had a, a friend that he he ate he ate six tubs of, uh, of margarine. Yeah, he ate six tubs of margarine. And that was just recently. He's been in the hospital for one month now, and I can't believe he's not better. <laughs> that's got to be one of my worst ones <laughs> um food deliveries uh they're making a fortune off me i'm telling you that um and i know one company's coming up with new ideas greg's are thinking about doing a drone delivery for their food 
But that's a bit pie in the sky thinking, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, I am going to bring you on our next act. I've, I've never seen this person perform before, so I am very excited to, uh, to, to see what she does. So, everyone, please give a very warm welcome to our next act. It is the amazing May Buffy. Hello, I'm on earlier than I thought. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. All right. So my name is Maeve, like wave, Buffy, like coffee, and I am very annoyed that there hasn't been more poems written about me. <laughs> um, so I'm coming at you live from Edinburgh, from inside my house and not inside the pub, like my dreams were meant to be. Uh, you can tell I have taken the news quite badly because I've used the Women's International yes. Call of Distress, which is I've cut my own fringe. Yeah. Uh, whenever a woman in your life cuts her own fringe, you should either be very terrified or aroused, or both. <laughs> uh, but I've I've been inside been inside for a while now with the lockdown. It's been quite interesting because you get a real chance to see like who you are when no one's watching. Like, who am I without society looking at me? And uh, it turns out I'm a disgusting person, mm -hmm. uh, which has been quite a disappointment. I genuinely used to be that I like showers. No, <laughs> no, I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but a another disappointment at myself I found out is that I do not possess the basic organizational skills that you need to be a superhero. Mm -hmm. Because the sheer number of times I've gotten to the front of the queue at Lidl and I've opened up my bag and where's my mask? It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to do the 2020 walk of shame home, which whereas I walk home with my bare naked face hanging out for the world to see. <laughs> <laughs> Go home and see some of my own filth for a while. <laughs> but I found uh, over lockdown, it's been a lot like being in, uh, you know, North Korea in some ways. Um, a lot of us have the same haircut. So women get the um, the three inches of regrowth they haven't seen in years. And uh, the look I have myself is on this panic fringe. And the, uh, the cat lady look or the modern plant lady look. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but men have been quite lucky. A lot of you have been able to grow with the beard you've always wanted to grow out without the um, the awkward bullying in the in-between stages. Mm -hmm. And uh, some women have taken the chance to do the same as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've actually, I think the big credit of that was my like North Korea was I made quite a bit of propaganda when it first came around. Uh, in that on day one, I went on a very, very, very long one hour of exercise and took as many photos as I could along the way. And uh, I've just been releasing them out um, on Instagram just to prove I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, something that was very important for me going into lockdown, I made a list of all things I really wanted to focus on. And uh, number one was my before body. Um, which I definitely achieved, you know, I put in the time, the work, the donuts, everything. And um, <laughs> what was quite upsetting to discover after all the work I'd put in is that uh, I don't actually suit a before body. And um, that is because, I, I don't know if you can see it enough, but uh, I'm very, very deathly pale and I don't really have a chin. So if the light hits me just right, I look like the uh, the thumb of a Victorian child ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so not not my dreamed of. Uh, but if I'm being honest, I was actually you know for the first part, for the first lockdown, I was grand. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't too panicked because uh, I grew up in Ireland as a, what I could describe uh, an elite level only child. And that I grew up in a very beautiful part of Ireland called the, uh, it's, you, you probably have heard of it, it's it's called the Arse End of Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I grew up spending my days, you know, surrounded by the mountains. I'd be, you know, singing to sheep, talking to birds, dancing with wolves. 
doing whatever I could to win the title of Ireland's saddest Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> which I won in consecutive years, 2015 to 2018, uh, which was wonderful. <laughs> But I, I do feel sorry for parents who just have the one child uh, because it's very hard if you have the one kid because you have like 100% failure or 100% success. And that's it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can't, you can't sort of disguise the, the bad one. You have to see the, you have to see the kid. If you've got three kids, you'd be like, yes, yes, Neve is getting her master's. Yes. Oh, yes. Michael is still a teacher. Yes. Yes, Steve is still doing a screenplay in the basement. Did I mention Neve's doing her masters? It's uh, I would say it's very hard to hide the dark sheep in the family if you just have the one sheep. Yeah. Mm. So I'll uh, I'll leave you on a little agricultural note, is as, as is tradition in Ireland. And uh, thank you very much. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Everybody, give it up for Maeve Buffy. All right. Hey. That was absolutely fantastic. Oh, that was fantastic. I really like that. And um, I know what you mean, Maeve, by, you know, going to Little, forgetting your mask. I've done that before. Felt the shame. I've embarrassed myself in a few shops. One time I went to a bakery, went to a bakery in Glasgow, and um, I, I looked at the, the cabinet of the cakes and I said, excuse me, um, see that cake there? Is that a macaroon? Or a meringue, uh, and the guy said, "No, you're not wrong. It's a, it's a macaroon." <laughs> um, I was in the uh, pharmacy. Everyone, everyone looked, I'll do, do another accent one. So I was in the I was in the pharmacy. I was saying, no. I said to the guy there, "Excuse me, excuse me, can I get some uh, deodorant?" And he said, "Certainly, sir. A uh, ball or aerosol?" And I said, "Neither. It's from my armpits." <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i am gonna bring on our next act now so this is the guy i've seen perform before he is absolutely hilarious he is certainly not shit he's very funny indeed uh please <laughs> welcome to the stage the amazing michael Bunkow. yeah you're right oh, good. all right how you doing you doing all right fantastic Ooh. yeah yeah that's the level of energy i want to maintain yeah Bang! Don't exaggerate. <laughs> so, yeah. this, is, this, this is, well, I'm English. This is as excited as I can possibly get, all right? In fact, this, this is me having an orgasm. Um, no, that's all right. I'm joking. That's my wife having an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been doing this for years now, and I'm still shit, so... Uh, Let's get it out of the way. So the pain as as possible to, you know, go to the pub and get pissed instead. Um, I have. Uh, I've been asked to take all the swearing out of my act. Good night. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, I have. I've been asked to stop talking about the Spice Girls. Yeah. And so I said, fine. If that's what you want. What you really, <laughs> really want <laughs> to stop right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. <laughs> too, too much? <laughs> um, there's always one Spice Girls fan who gets that, and it's, it's always me, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I thought I'd do. Can I do one Spice Girls joke? Get it out of the way. Is that okay? Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's the level of energy I expect from Spice Girls fans. Good. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> I told Jerry Halliwell from the Spice Girls. I told Jerry Halliwell she had a clandestine relationship with my pet kangaroo. She wasn't convinced. She said, "Is your wallaby my lover?" <laughs> Even I can't believe I do that sometimes. Really. <laughs> Emma, Emma Bunton was the last person to join the Spice Girls. Um, I often use that fact to break the ice at parties. <laughs> I, I, I don't get invited to parties very often. Um, no, seriously, Emma was the last person to join the Spice Girls. She replaced a girl called Michelle Stevenson. 
Michelle Stevenson just wasn't fitting in with the Spice Girls. I mean, she was a great singer, a great songwriter, and a great dancer, which is why she wasn't fitting in with the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, I've been living in Rome for 20 years now. And uh, after 20 years in Rome, I finally found a great place to work, London. <laughs> <laughs> I've started a Facebook page for people who never have sex, so pretend they'd rather be socialising. Mm. It's called it's called Expats in Rome. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is this is Rome twenty years ago. Fucking bus ain't coming. This is Rome now. I've got this awesome application on my telephone. It says fucking bus ain't coming. <laughs> That's progress. <laughs> what did John Lennon say to Mussolini? I know you're depressed, but nothing to get hung about. <laughs> uh, what did John Lennon say to Mussolini the next day? Let me take you down. <laughs> <laughs> Berlusconi, actually, what, what's the difference between coronavirus and Berlusconi? Yeah? Coronavirus might go away. <laughs> um, <laughs> Berlusconi actually said at this point in life, all I want is food, place of sleep, regular sex. That's what Berlusconi said. I just want food, place of sleep, regular sex. So why is he so desperate to stay out of prison? <laughs> <laughs> I can see a solution here. My wife, my uncle, and my sister said, you got to help. We're obsessed with 70s disco. I said, it's okay. We are family. <laughs> and I will survive. <laughs> my dad said, I'm obsessed with Frankie Goes to Hollywood. I said, relax. Don't do uh -huh. it. My mother said, I'm obsessed with One Direction. I said, fuck off then, you stupid bitch. Uh -huh. <laughs> said, Listening to fucking shitty music like that at your age, you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. I'm joking here, but I think my mum is into pop music. I do. She said, I want to get my hands on some Randy Newman. Uh -huh. <laughs> I read in Wikipedia, so it must be true. Uh, Syria, 5,000 men ready to enter. I thought, that's not Syria, that's my mother. <laughs> What's the difference between the Spice Girls and my mother's legs? The Spice Girls get back together. Now... <laughs> No, I understand that was a bit harsh. In fact, I must, I have to tell you, um, it was a bit embarrassing last night because I did that show and I didn't know, but my dad was in the audience, um, really. But he was really cool about it. You know, afterwards he comes up to me and he just says, Mike, I know you're just fucking around, but next time don't make any more jokes about the Spice Girls, please. <laughs> Religion's a tough one, you know that. Incest, I can relate to that. <laughs> I have a confession to make. Uh, I did incest once, but I'm sworn to secrecy about who it was with. Yes, mum's the word. <laughs> my, dad keep uh, my dad keeps lecturing me about my Madonna obsession. I said, Papa, don't preach. Uh -huh. <laughs> My dad said, Michael, my dad said, Michael, you are lazy and vulgar. I couldn't be bothered to answer the fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> my dad is a failed epileptic. No great shakes. <laughs> Even I can't believe I do that one sometimes. <laughs> my dad has green fingers. Cunt's been dead for six months. <laughs> so um, I think I've been going on more than enough, so I'm going to fuck off now. Um, I'm just going to finish with my, my English joke. 
Um, if you don't speak English, because I know there are some Americans watching, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to try anyway. <clears throat> what does an Italian say to an expat in Rome? Anything he likes, the cunt won't have learned the language. That's all for me. You've been <laughs> mediocre as usual. I'm glad that's over. Thank you very much. Yeah, all right. I won't say like me on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> very well done, everyone. Give it up one more time for Michael Monkhouse. Thank you. Thank you. Exaggerate. Outstanding, outstanding. So, yeah, I really like that. That was good. And I, I like the way these uh, online comedy shows are going. Um, one day, there, there was someone I heard overheard saying that uh, technology will replace all paper. And I thought, that guy's never wiped his arse with an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about technology, um, Twitter. I love Twitter. I was uh, talking to my doctor the other day. I said to him, Doc, you've got to help me. I've got a Twitter addiction. And he said, sorry, I don't follow you. <laughs> <laughs> Going to move on to our second last act of the evening. Time really does fly. Time flies like an arrow and fruit flies like a banana. So I am going to bring on our next nice guy. Please give a very warm welcome to this great guy. My good friend. Ian McDonald, there you go. Hello, everyone. Um, just following on from the Spice Girl stuff, did you know that Victoria Beckham doesn't need to read any sworn testimonies to know if something's true? No, she doesn't. She just hears half a David. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's going to be that kind of set. It's going to be that kind of set. Let's set my timer for 10 minutes because some people don't know what 10 minutes is. Oh, holy oh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, my wife has recently left me because of my pasta touching fetish. Yeah. I'm feeling kind of lonely right now. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you've got to feel sorry for German cats, you know. What with them having nine lives. <laughs> Diego Maradona cannot identify a large white bird, a huge throat pouch and a big long beak. No. Don't worry, though. Pelly can. <laughs> <laughs> right, want to some jokes now about video games. The women from Tomb Raider had quite a few agricultural small holdings. She had a Lara Crofts. <laughs> <laughs> I went into the store dressed as my favourite Mortal Kombat character. When the shop assistant asked if I needed any help, she said, I said, no, I'm just looking. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, I don't know. Um, here's another one. Um, a character from Street Fighter was struggling to come up with the name um, of another animal that's similar to a buffalo. Um, bison. No, I think it was Zangief. Actually. <laughs> 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 um, when, oh, I'm using that one on Sunday. Um, when Mario wanted to dissect his arch nemesis via Google Chrome, he got to his computer and opened up his Bowser. <laughs> okay. Um, what's a Yorkshireman's favourite video game developer? E. E. <laughs> I don't know, man. I was going on holiday with a dot-eating yellow sphere from the 80s video game, but he kept sort of procrastinating instead of preparing for a holiday. Eventually said... My God, will you just pack, man? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> My friend spent so long in choosing a fighting game. Honestly, it was Tekken forever. <laughs> <laughs> right, some jokes on India now. Anyone familiar with India and cities and regions on it? No. That'll be a no then. Fuck it, <laughs> let's see how these run out. Um, when the British ruled in India... When the British ruled in India, they were crazily violent. Totally Raj. <laughs> so, you want to find out the capital of the state of Uttar Pradesh? <laughs> Good luck now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, who laughed at that? Who laughed at that? <laughs> Do you know about India? Whoever laughed at that? Anyway, I'm, I'm, whoever laughed at that, I'm calling on you for the rest of these jokes. Um, when I was researching sort of Indian jokes, um, I found out there was a tri tributary, I can't even say that word, um, river in India called the Pun Pun River. Yeah. And I think for sign, finding the city that runs through it, I deserve a pat on the back. <laughs> yeah. Partner, partner. No what? Fuck it. Um, a Canadian country music singer was having a go at one of England's most successful football players in one of the largest cities in India. Chennai at Twain. No, she'd a pop at Gary Lineker in Mumbai, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to buy a selection of cooked meats when I visited India. So where did I go? This is a question. Uh, <laughs> the New Delhi? No, I uh, went to the counter where they sell cold cutters. <laughs> <laughs> Took you down one way, went you another way. Right now, <laughs> comes now. <laughs> uh, Popeye, Popeye, he asked his customers how he could improve his business, and he said that his girlfriend's shop was too small. So to appease them, he had to extend the olive branch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the bear from the the bear from the jungle book all of a sudden just started swearing at me. It came completely out of the blue. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood Scrappy Doo's catchphrase about the heavy rock singer's molecule obsession. Lemme at him. Lemme at him. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the lot of I love that one. <laughs> um, Cap Captain Hook, he knows question marks like the back of his hand. <laughs> it's a hook like a question mark okay never mind I'll stick with a lemmy atom one right <laughs> supermarkets I mean I have to take the role on as both parents to my kids um, when I do the cleaning I do it as mum but when I do the shopping I do it as da <laughs> 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 I'm sure well I think I know um, well, I mean, it might be true that um, a certain supermarket openly sells out-of-date produce. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. <laughs> <laughs> supermarket puns. I could do them all day. <laughs> <laughs> but I do find it Tesco frequently understocked and sort of quite overpriced for what you get which makes their slogan of every little helps seem more appropriate to my weekly shop. <laughs> yeah, not doing that one again. Um, Angus Young. Angus Young was sure that Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman were all from Marvel. When I presented him with evidence to the contrary, he said, uh, I see DC. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell with a joke. Don't we'll fucking deny it. <laughs> uh, right, get on to some superhero jokes then. Um, got loads of these, but um, I've got them down to 27. Um, Tony Stark would always kick about... Tony Stark would always kick about creased clothes. I would say, you just Iron Man. <laughs> Pac-Man, Iron Man. Everything's man these days. No, I'm not doing that one then. Um, <laughs> I went to the toilet and I shat out Barry Allen. Yeah. I mean, I thought the rest of the DC superheroes would follow, but just turned out to be a flash in the pan. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you heard about the Scottish superhero with a bow and arrow? Hawkeye. Right, no, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know how long we'll be going. 7.45. Right, let's wrap through a few of these. Just in any kind of order. Yoda was so grateful for someone showing him his little plot 
where you could grow vegetables. He said, that allotment. (laughs) (laughs) Have you you heard about the Mexican bodybuilder that ran out of protein shakes? No way, Jose. (laughs) (laughs) Remember in the Black Panther film when he had to go for help to someone? Well, do you know he actually went to Azerbaijan for that? He was going to, hmm, Baku. <laughs> That's a fucking belter. <laughs> Get into your Marvel mare. All right. No, okay. Anyway, um, the capital of Finland thinks that heaven is on the rise. But hell, sinky. <laughs> 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 I got so drunk in the capital of Germany. I was Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> See if I thought that you'd taken my 3310. I'd knock you a door. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else likes that joke either, but now it's gone. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> mm, neg- <laughs> okay. mm, network provider really make. No, fuck, right? You can start again because I was reading two jokes. Anyway, right. This is the second Star Wars joke. Fuck it. I don't even like Star Wars. Man. Anyway. Mm, network. Mm, network provider good this is. As my Yoda phone. Uh, my network provider really makes me laugh. <laughs> Okay. Samsung's were chanting at the other mobile phones. Who are you? Who are you? The rather confusing reply was, Who are we? Who are we? (laughs) (laughs) I was tasked with the job of impersonating a train. Seems a bit off more than I could choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, Connor, is that enough? I've got some dirty ones I was going to finish yeah. on, but it's up to you, man. Oh, if you've got dirty ones, I'd love to hear it. Fuck it. Okay. Absolutely. Right, dirty <laughs> ones. Let's get the dirty ones on. The <laughs> Not the good ones, the, the dirty ones. Um, you know, I like my women, like my generalizations by and large. <laughs> Did you hear about the guy that wanted to have sex with his mother, but he couldn't because it was bursting for the toilet? It was neither piss. Go to school, need a book. Um, as a weight loss, as a weight loss technique. I had energetic sex with someone that I fancied for ages. I lost two stones with one bird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I killed, I killed two stones with one bird because then that joke would have fucking worked. Anyway, um, when I and when I and no, in fact, uh, the nice one or the naughty one? No, we'll do the nicer and then the naughty one. Um, have you heard about the premature ejaculator that's in intensive care? Apparently, it's touch and go. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, from me, um, I once answered my hotel door to a prostitute that I'd ordered. And she asked me, can I come inside? And I said, ironically, I'll be asking you the same question in about 20 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you like any of this nonsense... Um, I'm part of the UK Buzzwords team. Um, if you like winning money for listening to comedy, not necessarily me, but it's on pretty much every Tuesday, every fortnight. Check out at UK Buzzwords. And also we've got a pun page, or not a pun page, but a pun group. Um, UK Pun Off, if you can see it there. Very nice. Broadcasting every Sunday. Um, yeah. Yeah. And follow me if you like any of my stuff. I pretty much do it on a daily... Well, no, I do do it on a daily basis. Um, You will just absolutely be sick of me after a little while. But subscribe to me on YouTube because I um, 
Back in 2007. Sorry, Connor. I'm doing to you what you've done to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and back in 2007. This isn't a joke. This is a fucking story. Um, back in 2007. I um, back in 2007. This is 2007. Time I've said that. Um, <laughs> Scotland won the Kieran Cup. The last British team to win an international trophy to this date. Okay. Um, so I put on Kieran Cup Legend as my YouTube banner type thing. Um, and I've not been able to change it since. So I'm looking for 100 subscribers to my YouTube channel so I can change it to at iMacPun. Like everything else, that's Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, at iMacPun. But I just need to change my YouTube to that because there's some belting jokes on there some shit ones as well <laughs> but they're all jokes, they're all puns and thank you very much for thank you very much to Connor for putting on such a great night this is going to grow from strength to strength and back to you man thank you very much alright that was amazing everybody give it up for my good man Ian McDonald <laughs> that was a fantastic one Lions. And, and, and again please guys do subscribe to YouTube because he, he's, he's a funny guy he's absolutely fantastic so um, I, I am still unemployed, as I was saying. I had a, a job interview the other day. I was at the job interview, I was talking there, and um, they said to me, have you got any experience? I said, yes, this is my 20th job interview. <laughs> I'd say that's the point where you hear sad violin music. But I've been upbeat. I, yeah, I've always got a smile on my face, and people don't understand why, given the circumstances. And uh, sure, uh, people say to me, Connor, how can you stay so positive? How can you stay so happy? I said, the secret is to never argue with anyone. And they said, come on, there must be more to it than that. There must be a secret. And I said, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> so, sadly, we are now on our final act of the evening. And again, this this is uh, someone I've not seen perform before, but I am so lucky that he is uh, decided to come onto the show for the, this first night of it and uh, the, the, the last slot. Um, it's a real pleasure to have this guy on. I'm sure he's uh, an absolutely excellent guy. So please give a warm welcome to my man, Tarian! Yay, Tarian! Thank you, Fast, 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 fast. Yeah, hello, hello. Fast, man, give it up for your wonderful host, man, Connor Bella. Boy, you done it yourself, man. Give a round of applause, man. It's killing it. <laughs> so, mate, you didn't need to tell me that you'd never seen me perform, mate. I, I had no way of knowing that information. Like, you grasped yourself, mate. You should have just, just left it, mate. I just started revealing the secrets, bro. It's all good, man. Thank you for having me on, Connor, man. Uh, this is as close as I, I'm ever going to get to university, man. Uh, it's fucking gutting, isn't it? But uh, happy to be here, man. Uh, uh, two things. I thought the show started at half seven. And I didn't realise I was last, so my buzz has worn right after and about this point, man. But it's been a fucking wonderful show up to this point, man. Very much enjoyed it. And I know the three to six people that have tuned in have fucking loved it as well, man. So I'm fucking, I'm happy to be here. It's been fucking wonderful. You should probably tell a joke or two now, man. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Harry and Boyd. Uh, you may notice that those two names do not match up. Not at all, man. I will explain why. Um, you see, Tarium is actually Arabic and Boyd is just a Scottish man. Uh, and that is because uh, my father is an Arab and my mother is a Ned. So he's going to come together like that. Uh, together like this. Salam alaikum, man. Alaikum salam. Uh, no, man, I'm a, uh, I, had, I want to tell you a bit about myself, man. Uh, I grew up in a small town called Castmilk on the south side of Glasgow. Uh, you probably heard it. No good things, but a lovely shopping centre, man. Uh, I grew up in Cast Milk uh, in the early 1990s. Uh, and as you can imagine, at that time, not a lot of Arabs in Cast Milk, man. In fact, you're looking at 99% of all the Arabs that have ever been through Cast Milk, man. <laughs> the other 1% was the week in 1995 when my dad came to visit. And I think it, it really took to the city, man, he really adapted to Glaswegian culture because, like all Glaswegian fathers, he boosted shortly after I was born, man. Uh, but for the one week, 
for the one week that he was here, man, he was hanging about with my cousin Jimmy, right? And I get I get one story that I think sums up his entire experience at our wonderful mad culture, right? So my dad had just come out of Abu Dhabi. He was in cast milk for the first time in his life, hanging about with my cousin Jimmy, and they were walking up the main street, right? A guy hangs out the window, shouts something at my uncle, and he, my uncle turns to my dad and says, did he just fucking shout something at me? And my dad says, what did you say, mate? I cannot understand that accent. <laughs> my uncle, out of nowhere, pulls a hammer. Right, he was only wearing a pair of Celtic away shorts, man. We've got no idea we're going to be. Put a hammer right out of shorts, man. Dad never seen anything like it in his life. Uncle bounces up the gaff. He's away for about two and a half minutes. Comes back doing covered in tomato sauce. Well, that, that's what my dad told me anyway. Covered in tomato sauce. No hammer in sight. He turns to my da and he says, do you want to get a chippy? <laughs> my da is standing there, shocked, thinking, what the fuck is a chippy? <laughs> 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 oh, that's cool, man. Uh, I get a wonderful partner, Jeno, here, here, man. Uh, I spent spent lockdown with well, a woman, a woman. They will come and they will go, but this one stayed. For all the lockdown, Fleetwood, man. So uh, I, I tell you a story about how we met, man. I, yeah, we was, it, was about, it was four years ago, right? And we were out in the campsies, which, if you're low fair here, it's just a hill. Imagine a hill. Doing that. <laughs> up that hill, right? <laughs> so Genoa, she's walking down the hill, and I'm walking up the hill, and I see her fair distance. But as she gets closer, she doesn't get any bigger, which is very exciting for me, man, because you might not be able to tell by this camera, but I'm only five foot one. I know this Mandela looks a look like my bit host a guided meditation session, man. I saw uh -huh. it's illusion. So shit. <laughs> Five foot one, man. This size, right? As Genoa was getting closer to me, she didn't get any big art, and I was shocked because I'm not saying that midgets all know each other or anything like that. But if a midget walks by another midget, you know they're gonna look at each other. It's like bus drivers, man. We are not that far, man. I can't speak on behalf of little people, but I can speak on behalf of we cunts. And as we walk by each other, it's very rare that we see each other. So she walks by and I think, fuck, has anybody seen the height of this lassie? Has anybody seen how we this lassie? This is mental, man. She walks by me and I just turn around for one male look because I can't believe her fucking voice. As I turn around to have one final look at her, I see that she is also looking back at me. Because she's obviously walked in and thought, what's going on with the wee man here? What is happening there? I've never seen one of these. <laughs> walked in, she shouted at me. I said, what's your name? She told me her name. And we've been together ever since, man. It's a wonderful, lovely, positive story that I've no got a punchline for. But I will tell you. I will tell you, man. I'm very happy to be in a relationship. I'm happy to be with somebody who is as mad as me. I don't mean like, like you're fucking mental. Like none of that, none of that, man. I just mean like, she's a wee bit fried. I, I got a story, I got a story that is the perfect example for this, right? So let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Come in close, right? Let me bring this fucking comedy stick close to my face. Here we go. <clears throat> uh -huh. So Genoa, she goes and she buys her mom a big bouquet of flowers, all right? Big purple flowers. She leaves them in her bedroom for her to come home to. She writes a little note inside it, and it's got a little one-liner, Ian, you would have loved the shit out of it. It said on the front, what's a mom's favorite flowers? And on the inside it said, to Santa Mums. Huh? Hey. <laughs> but the reason that I told that story in an American accent is because it was only Mother's Day in America at that point. To Genoa's mother, it was just a <laughs> random Wednesday. And that's how you know you got somebody who's right for you. When they don't know the UK for the US for Mother's Day for the Mother's Day, they're asked for their elbow, you know that you're meant to be together. Eh? How's that? How's that? High five, high five now. Yeah? Fantastic. This is just off a hop. How do three people in Dundee, man? It's fucking, man, it's going to be great. Look at yours is going, man. I never started my watch. Shit, I never started my watch. Fuck it, man. Let me finish up. What have I got, man? What have I got in the back of my horn? Uh, cool. Wait, I've been man. keeping busy, man. I've been keeping busy during lockdown. Uh, I was Googling interesting facts, right? I was trying to see, I was trying to see, like, if I could learn some new shit. And I found it. Don't know if this is true. But apparently, a sneeze is one-tenth of an orgasm. Right, and apparently this is common knowledge, but I'd never heard it before. And I don't believe everything that I read on the internet, right? I know a lot of it's pish, man. 
But I do think that there is a commonality between sneezing and ejaculating, and that they both have the potential to ruin someone's Weetabix. <laughs> was going on. Me and Jen were doing like, as, like, as I go, so that's the first time I was out in the world. That went well. I was all right, good, fucking good. Where else we go here? One line of you boys would love this. What is a Muslim's favorite insect? A mosquito. I always do one liners, but I end up writing punchlines and stories and shit, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I get anything else, man. Yeah. So, oh, oh yes. Me and my tiny girlfriend are going to open a clothing store for children. It's going to be called Gucci Gucci Goo. <laughs> ah, it's no me, man, is it? Nah, somebody else gave me that joke and I thought oh. I'd try it, but I, I didn't write it, man. That's cool. We'll know, I know for next time, man. One uh, job. Uh, absolutely cool. That would be us, man. Uh, this has been cool. This has been the first time I've done comedy in fucking months, man. I was confused about it. I was scared about it, but it's been lovely. Connor, you've been a wonderful host. Comedians, you've all been fucking wonderful. I really had a good time with this, man. Can't wait to get back out into the real world. Stay safe, stay positive, stay happy. And, of course, everything that I've said tonight, I come from two different cultures, man. I come from the Scottish, who are wonderful, wonderful storytellers, and the Arabs, who are fantastical liars. So just <laughs> take everything that I've said tonight with a wee pinch of sand, and I think we will be all right. I've been sorry, I'm boyed. We're fucking back, bitches! Let's do this, man. I'll see you all when the world opens back up. Thank you very much. I'm just going to back it. I'm just going to back it. Yeah! Up. Um, Absolutely fantastic. Everyone, give it up one more time for Terry and Boyd. Hey. That was outstanding. Oh, it was um that was our final act of the evening. I'm a bit sad. I'm also a bit nervous. I just got a text message from an anonymous person telling me to brush my hair, uh brush my teeth, uh look nice, and I think he's trying to groom me. <laughs> <laughs> saw this uh, weird post on Facebook the other day, and it was just you know, it's like you know, your nonsense with all this these adverts. And it said, uh, "Do you wear a face mask? Do you wear glasses? You could be entitled to condensation." <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe it. The you know, one hour, fifteen minutes later, we have done it. We've made it to the end and that is just wonderful i th this has gone better than I, I could have possibly imagined i would just like to give a huge thank you to these amazing comedians and my friends uh jimmy longmuir uh stephen Youngson. yeah keep clapping keep clapping yeah uh chris ashworth made poppy uh <laughs> michael bunkhouse ian mcdonald and Great. Harry and Boyd! Woo! And I've been your host, Connor Phillip. And we should um, be back here uh, next week at 8 p.m. Uh, with, with a host of new acts, maybe some old ones if they like to be on again. And I've <laughs> had an absolute pleasure tonight. So uh, this has been Dundee University Comedy Club, or just a comedy club online. It's been an absolute pleasure. All the best. Good night. Thank you, man. Thank you, Paul. Press the button. Press the button. Press the button.